Good evening ladies and gentlemen, it is the 16th of June 2011, I'm UB1980 and this is Twist News. In the news today we have Google Access Linux, Mac and BSD search tool. Microsoft possibly to release a Windows 8 tablet of their own. Kaspersky releases security suite for GNU slash Linux. Microsoft find in patent case. Toshiba to release an Android tablet. Nintendo to release innovative Wii successor. Dell struggles with Android tablets. The future of Android tested by Google, Facebook and Akamai. Ubuntu may shift to Chromium after 12.04 release. And in opinion we have the commoditization of software and what it means for its future. And of course we have the weekly chess problem. First in the news. We have Google removes Lack Linux, Mac and BSD search tool. Previously, where the search tool was, as you can see on the page, google.com slash search tool, essentially we had Linux, Microsoft, Macs, or B Mac or BSD, uh, apparently it now links to a generic search engine. Google claims that the search algorithms are superior now, and some, however, are considering this to be an error on Google's behalf. What we must remember is that Google may not have realized how ingrained search approaches are difficult to change in many people's habits. There are rumors surfacing on the internet that Microsoft may possibly release a Windows 8 tablet of their own in 2012. Windows 8, basically, it has a native tablet interface and the market for embedded devices seems to be increasing in competition as time goes on. It makes perfect sense that Microsoft would, wouldn't be part of that, but indeed, in, in order to reduce risk, they could have a tight hardware and software integration, much like Apple, leading to performance benefits. And branding, of course, would be stronger, as they'd have much more control over the platform. Kaspersky has released a security suite for GNU slash Linux, which includes an antivirus engine and the ability to ensure that uh, networks are protected over the SMB protocol. It's designed to protect GNU slash Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. The rationale behind this is that GNU slash Linux is installed on in a significant number of servers uh, which support heterogeneous clients. Therefore, it makes some sense to protect GNU slash Linux whilst also protecting others. And of course, attacks on other platforms are generally higher. Microsoft has been fined in a new patent case. The US Supreme Court ruled in favour of a company called i4i which owns a patent which affects Microsoft Word. The patent said is to be related to text manipulation. The damage awarded were, damages awarded were $300 million US. Microsoft has said it is already compliant with the injunction to stop selling affected copies. Various approaches to mitigate or nullify the effects of the patent were attempted by Microsoft, with all attempts to do so invalidated by the court. Software patents continue to be a means for companies to trade intellectual property rights, however, this sort of barrier to entry is known in economics for its introduction of inefficiency. Toshiba is set to release an Android tablet known as the AT100. The specifications for this tablet are an NVIDIA Tegra. 2 CPU, Android Honeycomb 3.0, 10.1 inch screen running at 1280 by 800 and a user replaceable battery amongst other specifications. As mentioned last week, Toshiba needs to get back in the tablet gaming with a product like this. It seems that they're set to excite. Nintendo has said that it's going to release an innovative Wii successor known as the Wii U. This Wii will include a tablet-like controller, as we can see in the bottom right-hand corner. The controller appears to include a D-pad, analog sticks, shoulder and face buttons. The rationale behind this is that the ability to play fully featured games without a television or monitor makes for an intrig intriguing concept, whilst also being convenient. Dell is said to be struggling with its Android tablets with figures significantly smaller than the 25 million iPads already sold. There are other leaders in the market including Motorola and Samsung, but their numbers remain substantially lower in sales compared to Apple's tablet. In an interview with CNET, Vice President of Dell's mobility business stated that the US market is yet to be ready for an Android-based tablet device. The rationale behind this action in the market is that the first mover advantage is likely here. During the netbook phase, uh, Apple said it would not release a netbook which was not the sort of quality product that they were interested in. Apple virtually single-handedly however revived interest in the tablet market. Whilst renewing this market, they have now become to dominate it. 
In an effort to test IP version 6, Google, Facebook and Akamai have come together on the 8th of June 2011. Apparently the movement towards the protocol has been resisted by industry, but this uh, resistance cannot be perpetual due to the availability of IP addresses declining rapidly in the future. The rationale behind this is that these companies, these big internet companies, feel the need to become future-proofed and at the forefront of a protocol which essentially will become mandatory. Canonical, Ubuntu sponsor, has stated that after version 12.04 they may move from Firefox to Google's pro product Chromium. Chromium is a web browser which is known for its high speed and Firefox will still be available through the repositories much like Chromium is today. The rationale behind this is that while Chromium is fast and gaining increasing popularity many Ubuntu users are continuing to install it. Now in the opinion Look, it's been said that uh, free and open source software, I mean, we're always looking for the day of the Linux desktop. My opinion is that the day of the Linux desktop is, uh, I guess, not going to happen, so to speak. We're seeing versions like Android come out. And of course, when we say Linux desktop, I guess uh, we subtly mean GNU slash Linux desktop. Probably not going to happen. Uh, while free and open source software has increasingly placed pressure on proprietary software firms, as quality has improved over the years, for example in Firefox and the Linux kernel itself, perhaps in programs such as FFmpeg, Firefox, Kdenlive, Live and Zotero, well, these programs, they provide equal and superior quality. And while, yes, these programs come at virtually zero cost in terms of prices and liberties afforded, awareness, unfortunately, and strong community are key factors which may or may not prevent uh, their entry into the mainstream. Just remember a lot of people are not interested or even not even aware of free and open source software. So I guess the short of it is that uh, until uh, corporate backing happen happens, for example with Android, um, I guess supporting the Linux kernel to some extent, although forking it I guess essentially, uh, what this means for uh, all of us is that while we enjoy free and open source software we can appreciate appreciate perhaps uh, or respect um, the fact that uh, others may not be uh, so interested in uh, in using it. Um, I guess fundamentally distributions such as Debian I guess are, uh, are worthy supporters of free and open source software and they certainly have a, a place much like Fedora uh, and Red Hat through Fedora. Uh, but in the end, uh, it seems that, um, and I guess that uh, much like uh, some have stated, that um, Windows and uh, and uh, OS X will dominate until something which is completely paradigm shifting, such as the tablet market, comes along and completely replaces it, or or makes the desktop uh, as we see it completely irrelevant. Moving on to the weekly chess problem, we have here an interesting puzzle that I've come across. You may see that uh, black appears to be in a spot of bother there, but I assure you that if you think about it carefully, there is actually a way out. And uh, our little friend Sko Ricky seems to be able to solve these problems quite quickly, so I'm sure that uh, uh, he'll have a good go at this and probably provide a solution. But just remember, we need good analysis here. So if any of you guys can get out there with a solution quickly, I suggest you do it. Anyway, it's black to play, and uh, analyse and enjoy. It's been another vibrant week of uh, free and open source software, software, proprietary software, uh, and other tech news. As a general message to our viewers, I always ask that you please subscribe and vote. And of course, if you've got friends that might be interested in the content on here, news, reviews, and tutorials, please tell them. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Twist News, and I look forward to seeing you next week with our next episode.